Good day, fellow investors. How much more will stocks crash? I know I said it's impossible to predict, but we can take a perspective on the bubble and then get more knowledge about the fundamentals so that you know the risk and reward of what you own. Michael Barry says that the theater took a decade to overstuff and it will last for longer. Jim Chanus says that the worst hit stock still have a long way down and it's not just the tech and meme stuff that's vulnerable here. So there is a lot of room to go depending on the risk of what you own. And more than a year and a half ago I did this video about stock market bubbles and let's start with that because it will give you the fundamentals of what's going on. This was the hot stock back then, Virgin Galactic really booming, everyone was asking about this and this is an example of the seven factors that represent bubbles. So one is of course space travel. Ludicrous names, huge numbers, US companies with a larger market cap of 500 million, 10 times price to sales at historical highs. Not at 2000 levels, but still at historical highs. The link to this video will be in the description below. It's an amazing video to watch to see how crazy the market was just a year ago. Then the most popular stock in Norway was Norwegian Air Shuttle. And needless to say, it was popular because of the great value there, there, buy it here, buy it here, and from here you still lost 99% of your money. So this is how low it can go. And this now can still go to zero, so still another 100% down. So really check this video in the link in the description below. It's from a year and a half ago and you will see how things change. That's one. But now let's go into the bubble factors a year and a half later. So the first bubble factor is exuberance. We have seen space travel. Then we have chasing performance, just chasing that momentum. Everything was about momentum. Sven, value investing is dead. Yes, that was the emails I was getting. Momentum chasing, what are the trend, what will go up. That was chasing performance. ARC funds are better. Katie is the new Buffett. So that was the story and that was a pretty strong story. And there was also fear of missing out. It was all about 10x stocks here on YouTube. And yes, I that focused on 10, 15% per year, I was the sucker on YouTube. And you remember these maybe, so massive growth stocks. This was from the video from a year and a half ago. So 10x everywhere you looked. Valuations were high. There was plenty of liquidity, zero interest rates. You were, get money, you were getting money into your pocket just for staying at home. Remember that, that was recent times. So opening trading accounts, trading your money, casinos were closed, so you had to gamble on the stock market. And then again, nobody was warning about risk because this time it's different. The price earnings ratio of the SAP was 30 and higher and the average was 19 and nobody was saying that valuations when interest rates go up will revert to the mean. No, it was different this time because what was the story? Technology, automatization, this will make profit margins skyrocket and again the same same story. Well, here we are now. This is again from GMO explaining how these bubbles work. We go up and we go down, we go up and we go down. If we take a look at the NASDAQ, we go up and we go down. Very, very simple. So these are the key bubble factors. And now you have to apply these bubble factors again to whatever investment you have. And the Fed is committed to cooling prices, which means less demand for things. And interest rates to peak at 4%, that's the projection now. Now, nobody knows whether this will be correct or not, but the projections are there. And what does a 3.8% interest rate mean for the market? Very simple. That means likely 6% treasuries, 2% stock premium, you need an 8% earnings yield from the market. P-E ratio of 12.5 for stocks, earnings down for the S&P 500 at 100, let's say on recession, on margins, and you can see the S&P 500 easily here. That's Pretty, pretty possible. Of course, nobody knows. Maybe the Fed will revert and let it leave it at 2% 
or lower it even, and then this will go up. This is just one scenario. But it's also true that the Fed is losing control, power of what it can do. And Jeremy Grantham says, if we are lucky, we have still two legs. So if we are lucky, we have still two legs. That's one leg, another 20% down, and then another 20% down. So we are still to go down 2,000 points. So possible, let's say a little bit less, 20% lowers it. But 2,500 could not be an issue. Then also, if we look at housing, this is really, really insane now. Now it has peaked and now it will likely revert because of higher mortgages and etc. But this is again a sign of craziness. You are paying eight times your income, yearly income for a home, which is too expensive. Five, it's okay, but even better if it is lower. Five, six is manageable. So this is okay. This was the housing bubble and we are above the housing bubble. So that's again something that tells you that there will be plenty of ups and downs in hanky-panky ahead. Because inflation takes precedence over everything else, says Jeremy Grantham, which means that it takes away all the ammunition for the Fed to help you and clear those bubbles, as it was the case over the last decades. So rates should be at 9% already to clear out things and that's the issue and the Fed cannot react. That's where we are now. So it is very very tricky. So the system has definitely no resilience so you have to find businesses that have resilience and it all looks like 1970s now. And if we look at the 1970s let me put this to the 19. 70s so <laughs> look at this beautiful chart look at this chainsaw so really really ups and downs and it is likely that we will be looking for these periods but keep in mind there were 50 percent up 50 percent down up and down and up and down and this is something that again you have to take as a given the market didn't do anything for 15 years. Good businesses, value stocks, low PE ratios did 10x over this period. So it boils down to investing. And you can see here how the Fed increased interest rates despite recessions and everything because of inflation. We don't know, we cannot predict, but we have to take it as a possibility because the Fed also doesn't know. And then we have transitory, we have this, we have that. Michael Burry says transitory, no, peak, no, to the moon, if you mean a cold, dark place. <laughs> very, very funny <laughs> or you don't know whether you want to laugh or cry. But then again, let's focus on investing, which is safety of principle and a satisfactory return. So again, back from that video, my hair was longer, but an investment operation is one which, upon thorough analysis, an investment promises safety of principle and a satisfactory return. Everything else is speculative. So you have to find things that no matter what happens, you know you, what you own, which is your safety, and have a satisfactory return. And that's bottom-up value investing. And tomorrow we will discuss 10 stocks as we did last week. I'll put the links in the video description below. And then we'll see how those investments fit the current environment. It is a tricky environment. We don't know whether we'll have a recession, inflation, whatever, higher rates, lower rates, but we have to find something that fits no matter what. And we did this video, so uh, something is already looking as a buy. If it goes lower, you simply buy more. Very, very simple. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.